few updates. I kind of through it at the moment, trying to organize my life, trying to figure things out, but there's more to come. I've been hugely delayed on this New York trip. I actually so do cuss a little. <laughs> visited during Memorial Day weekend. So this is, this is a long time coming to post. And maybe that's where I should start. Memorial Day weekend was the best time to go to New York, I feel. To see the streets covered with people who were so patriotic about their country, but also just normal people, huge vendors, the diversity of, along the strip. I got to see Radio City, a place where they do The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. So I can't talk about the US without talking about food. Now the portions were mahusive. And that's a complaint to a lot of people, but to me, that was a good thing. There is a famous food cart on West 49th Street and 6th Avenue. It's called Adil's Famous Food Cart. It's halal food. It was amazing. So definitely one of my recommendations. When you're traveling to central London, if you're from the UK, you know how busy and packed and just the hustle and bustle of a main city. New York is no different. I had the chance to go into the subway, which I don't know, I have, I've seen a lot of videos online about what the US subway is like and I didn't experience any of the crazies, didn't see any of their ads. It was a good experience. And when I say good, it just got me from A to B. And maybe actually, if you're a New Yorker, let me know how your subway times are, but they seemed on time, on point compared to London Underground. And you can't not go to New York City without visiting Times Square. Times Square feels like a dream for somebody outside US. And I know that sounds crazy to anyone who is, but there is just something so iconic about the screens, the lights and the people. We saw lots of performers, very similar to, I guess, when you go into like Trafalgar Square, singers, musicians, magicians. And we did see some performers who were like a dance troupe. There was two and they are like savage, super savage. I remember they began their performance with doing this long spiel about what they were going to do. And when no one came forward or donated money before their performance, they said, okay, we're done and literally just packed up their stuff and left. But of course, we saw some other incredible acts dancing, doing backflips. It felt really amazing and it was an honor to watch some of these incredible performers just perform on the streets and everyone enjoyed it. So for me, fashion is also a part of the expression and New York has it everywhere. From the people walking into the streets to the iconic stores and brands that you see everywhere. And then you can also see some really outlandish prices. Now here's a couple of clips of things that I would dream to afford, but I also, if I had that money, I wouldn't buy. We got to see the Harry Potter Warner Brother store, shop front, whatever, which was again, super iconic. One thing you have to do if you visit the States, I'm now, as I'm saying this, I can see a lot of comparisons between New York and London. They also have iconic theater performances and we have an iconic West End shows that happen all the time. So I got to watch a show called The Grey House. It's a bit of a lesser known show, but honestly, I would recommend to watch if it's still on, I don't know, but it was a great watch. Great performers, great staging, great lighting. And more British things going on was I got a chance to see the John Lennon Memorial. Obviously, it's, it's an interesting place, has such an iconic history. It was so great to see so many people honor an artist that has left an amazing legacy behind. And the park is incredible. It's worth going seeing. We went on a horse carriage. It was, it was a fun experience. And we also had some people complaining about the horses, which again, if you are from New York, let me know. Cause somebody shouted out that the horses weren't given like proper care, but our horse carriage driver said they, he was, he gave us kind of like all the details and what it was fed. It looks healthy. So. I wasn't sure, but if it was, you should let us know. Okay, like I don't like museums that much. I don't like exhibitions or standing around and watching things for a long periods of time. It's not my thing. But I will say that American Museum of Natural History was insane. The museum had global history. Obviously, I know US is connected to the entire world as it's seen as a superpower, but it was very interesting to see some of the regions that you wouldn't expect being covered. Obviously, so many facts, so many stats to absorb and take in. They also had a natural part of the museum where you got to see insects and bugs and butterflies. 
super super cool but my favorite part was this kind of like immersive experience at the end where you got to understand how dna connects us all how we approach the world um all together and incorporating the ideas of new york city within this kind of immersive experience was incredible now what can i say traveling to new york was both a nerve wracking and exciting time. Nerve wracking because of what we hear in the media. Now, we can't give it just to New York or, or just to the United States, but globally, there is a lot of political unrest. There is also xenophobia. Of course, going to the States, I had some reservation about what my experiences would be like in New York. But at the same time, I was super excited. Excited as the US describes themselves as the land of the free, home of the brave. And I was intrigued to see if this is captured also for visitors. Now, how can I describe New York? Of course, it has its stereotypes as a city. It is a complex and very probably oversaturated city, just like London, lots of people, lots of businesses, lots of things going on. It's a bit of like information overload. There was a lot of homelessness that you could see across the city. Um, there's also an issue with mental health, which is sad to see. What I will say is there's a great sense of everyone felt like a main character. Does that make sense? I guess it's, it's an American thing. We don't really have that view in the UK. I think we're very apologetic for who we are sometimes, um, as we should be when we look at the history. Um, but in the States, I think there's just like a very hopeful, dream focus following your dreams kind of vibe knowing that you'll make it no matter how tough it gets and that is quite special 